What is up, guys? Welcome to the Beyond Jiu Jitsu podcast, episode 112. Special guests in the house we have Levi Jones, Leary, and Alanis, fresh off the boat from New York. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having us. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth. Right? Yeah. We are infamous for our intros. Our intros are always terrible. Oh, so yeah, the audience yeah. is used to it. it yeah. Really yeah. It's a running joke. Yeah, yeah. Way. That's right. Actually, our first sort of like 10 episodes or eight episodes or something, we didn't even have a name for the podcast and we were like recording them in advance and we we're just like, welcome to the podcast, the podcast, <laughs> yeah. you know, where the, the so unnamed podcast. Yeah. We definitely have really shit intros and outros that, so people that was very fitting to how the show usually goes. Great. I'm it glad worked. I could, we could um, maintain the theme. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just quickly, most people, if they're listening to the episode would know who you guys are, but um, for those who don't Levi being one of the best, uh, lightweights and middleweights in the world and me as a heavyweight i could even argue he could smash me in my division so let's say best heavyweight in the world as well, you, know, you know one of one of the most um you know amazing athletes on the scene at the moment especially by far one of the best out of australia without a doubt uh plenty of titles under his belt alanis as in levi's word some explained to me is not everyone knows about her yet but everyone will soon very talented brown belt out of unity who has got um you know a uh, a rack of titles as well, described to me as the Kimura Queen, but probably more well known as the Empress as she goes by <laughs> on her Instagram, but uh, known for having a very savage Kimura. But uh, yeah, excited to have a chat, guys. Thank you for joining us on the episode and uh, let's get stuck into it. Thank you. So fire. <laughs> it's going to take me a second to like get used to hearing my own voice. I know when that's when I the first ever podcast I did was with who you've done one with before um, was with like Joey from from Jungle Brothers. Yeah. And the first time of like hearing your own voice in your head, and I was like, I don't like this at all. This is uh -huh. horrible. I really don't like it. But. I mean, I do it every week now. I'm used to it. You know. Literally. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this, this mic is just really good. I have, I, I, I hear myself when I plug myself, I've got this little um thing I make music on, but um, it's like the shittest, tiniest little mic. So it, it sounds really distorted. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm used to that, but this is, this is lit. Let's start with the music. You've segued that perfectly. So, <laughs> I mean, just, I don't want to not going into too much of our history, but you and I have known each other for years. Uh, but when we first knew each other, whether you were into hip hop or rap at that stage or not, I'm not aware. Like I knew you were always into music because there would always be like, we would always have heaps of music in the gym and you were always playing when you were, you know, in the gym, like dancing or whatever, always having fun. But it wasn't until, I don't know, at least, you know, from where I'm sitting the last couple of years where seeing more of it on Instagram and that. Have you always super been into wanting to to rap and freestyle or has it just become an outlet through COVID where you couldn't train or how did it come about? Um, yeah, I, I sort of always was into it um, since, since I was a kid. Like I'd be writing little – I never was very good at writing, but um, I'd always be trying to freestyle and stuff like since I was little. And um, – I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm still not very, very good at it, but, um, I think just during COVID, I just got more, um, comfortable with having creative outlets and like being shit at them, but just still feeling comfortable putting anything out there regardless, just, I don't know, being able to like express myself in other ways, um, was really helpful to me, you know, getting through, um, everything and just you know, time in isolation and stuff like that. You know, you just want to um, be heard in some type of way, you know, connect with people in some type of way. So that was sort of um, what pushed me to start um, putting it out there kind of more and stuff. But in high school, um, I would always add like a different SoundCloud and I would upload kind of music and stuff. But it was more um, just, it was sort of just boring, just like on a, on a guitar. I used to just play acoustic guitar and, Seeing it was kind of like Bob Dylan. It was so, it was sort of lame. Not gonna lie, but <laughs> <laughs> during the pandemic, I guess I I um I was just like 
I was re- like everyone, people comment sometimes like how high were you when, when you made this or some shit like that. And I was like, a lot of the time, like I, I was pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. not where I was expecting yeah. that. Yeah. That's, um, that's so funny. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> the, it's funny because, you know, I'm not a massive music person. I mean, I, <clears throat> I like music, but it's not definitely not one of the sort of the avenues that I'm super knowledgeable about or, or put a lot of time into, but, uh, you can see, you can see the difference. It's funny that you said like, oh, okay, I'm, you know, not very good at it, but, you know, happy to put time into it and express myself and put it out there. And I would say that's one of the attributes that few people have, but definitely one that you have that would be one of the the reasons you've become so successful at, at jujitsu because in, you can see a difference between some of your earlier, uh, freestyle stuff that you put on Instagram and your later ones. And even someone me who's not educated about music can see a difference in it. And, you know, I'm sure there's people who have, you know, yeah, made fun of you or whatever, but I had someone, I can't remember who, but just someone passing in the gym or a friend or someone came up on Instagram. They're like, Oh man, like, you know, so bad, blah, 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 blah. And I said something along the lines of, yeah, but man, you know, you don't understand like the way that Levi puts time into something. I mean, he's going to get better at it. If he applies himself mm-hmm. to it, I've seen the way he trains jujitsu. And, you know, if he ha- applies that to to his freestyle, it's just another art form or another skill set that he's trying to refine. He will get better at it and you can see a difference, you know. So all these people that are make fun of you, you know, they can laugh all they want. But like you said, it was a creative outlet for you and you understand, okay, I may not be that good at it, but I'm happy to put it out there and – we'll get better at it, right? I think most people would agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I sort of feel like, I mean, the the producing side of stuff, like the actual music producing, I don't put that much time into into it. Like I would, each song on my SoundCloud is just made in like three minutes because it's just like imp- three improvised tracks and then an improvised vocal track. Like I'd just be like, hit the drums for a minute and then hit the keys on the sample for a minute and then, improvise some lyrics for a minute so it'll just take like a few minutes to make but um the freestyling and stuff I the first time I went to the ciphers um is that the uh, the in, the bit where you're out outside that we mm-hmm. see that's in New York, yeah, right? yeah yeah so in, that's what yeah. I was gonna ask I was gonna say I was wondering if Alanis has become the default you know how there's those <laughs> jokes of like Instagram husbands where they got to take all the photos yeah. of the Instagram wife I'm like Alanis are you the one behind the camera are you the the, yes. the you know freestyle hip-hop wife who's having a film Levi there she was like yeah, yeah she would she'd be there like rolling up joints in the back and then <laughs> like, yeah. nice. stuff like that. But, um, the, the equivalent, you know, she's on fight day. She's there with the water bottle bottle to keep you hydrated. But on rap day, she's like, look, I got the blunts, you know, <laughs> just keep Literally. it going. No, on, on fight day, we're like sort of just trying to both be there for each other. But yeah, definitely when we, when we pulled up to the ciphers, all the, all the blunts were ready. But, um, yeah, it was sort of like, yeah, I got a tiny bit better at rapping, um, at freestyling when um after going there because I got really inspired by everyone that was there. And then I just started practicing like all day in my head, you know? Yeah. And that was sort of like a coping mechanism through like a stressful time for me for some reason. Um, I would just Was like, it was it was it hard for you to go there that first time, like and be so vulnerable? Like did people uh you know, were were all the more experienced freestylers and everything like supportive of you being there and giving it a go? Or did they all dump shit on you? No, I think like <laughs> Alana's is like look, the, Alana's time. face is like oh the bro they made so much fun of you. That's what it looks like <laughs> you're trying to say. Time, no, yeah. the first time I went in there with like was a couple was a, um, in 2019 and I was you know really bad and I I just went in there with way too much confidence and I got really roasted like but I just you know, took it because I don't know. I didn't, I thought I assumed to get roasted, but I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I think it's just like in jujitsu, you know, if you're a white belt and there's experienced, um, black belts, like 
no black belt's going to be like a dickhead to a white belt. Just That's right. That was shit, you know? That was the yeah. parallel I was going to draw because, you know, you see for sure you two would have – had conversations with lower belts where they say something along the lines of, oh, I just feel bad I'm getting in the way of that person's training. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, like if you're doing comp prep or something, you are, but like that's not the class. You know, you're, you know, the the black belt or the higher belt is now just paying back the services that someone gave to them because they were, you know, all of us sitting at this table here were once complete scrub white belts and if everyone treated us like shit from day one, yeah. Like, you know, and I feel like that's something I realized in jujitsu as well. Um, that can be, you know, that goes throughout so many different things. It's just how important it is to be vulnerable. You know, you have to be able to put yourself, you have to be able to be vulnerable to, to get better, you know, in, in anything. And, um, even just connecting with people, you know, in life, like that, um, idea of being vulnerable is just, it's so important, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's like you guys. So, uh, for the listeners, we had a seminar with Levi and Alanis uh, a couple of days ago at the gym and you were talking about, um, one of the, the things that the Murillo would say at unity with the whole, Oh, have fun in your training, you know, take risks and whatever. And yeah, it's kind of like being vulnerable. And yeah, I, just- I often tell people how I used to watch in the gym, like Bernardo Faria get, tapped by blue belts because he was like man it doesn't fucking matter it's just training like i'm trying new shit i'm trying to work stuff out like he didn't care if he you know if someone passed his deep half guard because he was working on stuff you know and otherwise if you don't fail how are you going to figure out if you're not willing to if every time you think someone scores an advantage on you in the gym that someone else is looking at you thinking that you're shit because a white belt scored an advantage on you he's like no and then obviously when it was game day he would go compete and you know beat almost everyone right yeah in in his time so yeah i think that's a good way to put it you got to be willing to be vulnerable and you know but fuck man walking into a into a freestyle hip-hop place holy shit take some balls man man yeah (laughs) i I, I definitely couldn't do that and how how was your posture alanis were you like i'm not with him i'm just (laughs) i'm just the camera girl i don't really know him that well i was like (laughs) When he, I actually wasn't there when he was like first, like initially getting like roasted or whatever. I was, um, I came, I came in, he messaged me. He was like, you were like, I don't want to see this. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, they're murdering me. I was like, I'm coming. So I got there and I started telling everyone he's a jiu-jitsu world champion. He's a yeah. jiu-jitsu world champion. <laughs> and they're all like, oh, look at the cauliflower. So this guy starts rapping. He's yeah. like, oh, that guy got his cauliflower ear. He does jiu-jitsu. And then they were all like. Suddenly they were all like, "Oh, let him let him go in," and then yeah, he yeah, started. Yeah. Then he started popping off that same day. I think there's like one of the videos on Instagram, like of that same day. So it, it was like one second they were like roasting him, and then like 30 minutes later he was like loving him. They were all like, "Okay, we like this accent. We like this guy." Like, <laughs> yeah, and and I was like, "Yeah, Levi. Yeah, like fucking <laughs> yeah, filming him and everything." So that was in 2019, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's funny. That's like the year that you really exploded onto the jiu-jitsu scene at Black. That was your first year at Black Belt, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's the for for those that don't know, in uh, 2019 Euro in the Euro final, you beat. Lucas Lepre on a referee's decision, which absolutely catapulted you onto the onto the jujitsu sphere. Not that you weren't successful at color belts, but I think you you said in your own words, once you hit black belt, everything that you've done previously is like null and void. It's like a clean slate. So yeah. that that was a massive year for you. And um, I did do a little bit of reading. And is it true to say that in the the 2019 Euros, you nearly didn't show up that day? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm like notorious for doing that type of stuff, you know, right. like I'll be I mean, like have to be somewhere or go somewhere and I'll just be like, mm, I can't be fucked. Yeah. <laughs> just, just go. Wait, hang on. No, I got to change my hair color. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. I'm like, yeah, like mm, my heart said no. Work. I'm like, okay. okay. Yeah. I trust which you. is, which, yeah, which is, um, toxic trait, definitely a toxic trait, but, um, yeah, I, I, it was just, I was having like a hard time getting, making weight and I woke up, I was just really shit at it pretty much. And I woke up um, that day two kilos over and I think I had to weigh in in like an hour. Wow. And I was just thinking like, 
I don't know. I don't think it's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of weight to lose. Yeah. How'd, how'd you do it? How'd you cut so much in, in such a short span of time? Um, I just did like everything that you're meant to do. You know, I put on the sweatsuit and then I um went into the, the warm up room there was really hot. And um, I basically just, just did it like spat a bunch, tried to piss a bunch. Sweat it out. Yeah. And yeah. I, I just, I remember um, the test scale, I was 0.2 over and I was like, fuck, I'm just going to go DQ myself. And then I walked on and the test scale was 0.2 heavy. So oh, I was perfectly on high. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I guess I'm fighting. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was lit. It was lit. I yeah. Called, I mean, I, it paid off, right? In the end. Like, I mean, looking yeah. back, you'd have to say you're, you're glad that you fought that day. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I, yeah, I definitely just have to for it. Uh, so I want to ask, like, you know, we were just kind of talking about the the period of time of uh, essentially during COVID and lockdown, but I wanted to, you know, dive into the the struggles of that a little bit more because it was it was hard for everyone, but particularly for you who would come off, you know, your 2018 at Brown Belt was astronomical, right? Yeah. Like you, you know, you won everything. You won Euros, uh, Pans, Worlds, oh. right? Got your black belt, you know, didn't just win Euros like, but, you know, you took out a name like Lepre in the process. Then you won Pans. Uh, then, Spider Invitational. Then, yeah, but like, you know, before that, that unfortunate, you know, double DQ at Worlds, like which was gut-wrenching because it looked like you were just on an unstoppable streak bounce back really well to then win the the spider invitational at the end of the year, you know, so that kind of shut up anyone who was, you know, questioning whatever. So the trajectory was astronomical. And then unfortunately the world just, or well, the universe was like, fuck you, Levi, you know, we'll just like <laughs> throw a pandemic in the way and, mm -hmm. you know, derail this rocket ship to, to stardom. How, you know, I, I assume it was very tough, but how 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 was that period of time of lockdown? And particularly, I think you were most of the time in the US for it, right? So obviously yeah. they had different rules and restrictions to here in Australia in terms of lockdowns and and stuff like that. So how was that period of time? Did you feel like, you know, your, did you ever question your career or whether you would continue with jiu-jitsu with the lockdown or were you like, nah, man, like screw you guys, I'll be back? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of people had sort of like took the pandemic and made um like did everything right. They s sort of kept training and did everything like that, but yeah, for me I I didn't. Like I was sort of um <clears throat> having a bit of a uh identity crisis because, you know, I had built um so much of who I was around this thing and this whole idea of myself of who I was was around this thing and then when it was taken away um sort of that part of me as well was taken away as well so I was sort of trying to find myself and stuff like that during the process of it all um I'd say yeah after spider I had a bunch of money like you said like I was thinking like okay now this is the time I put my head down I just work even harder you know because yeah, so for those who don't know it was one of the that was a big prize money, right? Like it was, uh, I think it was a hundred thousand, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know how much of the tax man took that or whatever, but um, I remember it was a lot. You won and Kynan won, right? Yeah. Um, so it was, it was a, a big time, right? For you to put your head down and, and so what was the direction pre COVID like in between spider and then when COVID happened? Yeah. I was just sort of, I was like, okay, I got all this money. I'm going to like, keep make, try make some more money off seminars, but I'm going to keep that. It's going to be my savings. going to be set. I'm going to put a mortgage down or some shit. I was thinking about my future. I was like, this is lit. Um, and then, um, so I went to New York. I was like, I just need to double down. And my thought process was like, just work twice as hard, train really hard, win worlds, and then start, um, you know, making some plans to like, figure everything out, you know, maybe I was going to, I was probably going to do more Nogi or something like that, but just sort of change the trajectory after I sort of got that world title. Cause that was always my main goal. Um, that was working towards since, uh, since white belt. Um, 
And then, yeah. And then when COVID happened, I was sort of, you know, it was just that in itself was sort of traumatizing because, you know, everything's going to shit. And then, you know, it's, everything starts looking like you can't, you can't see the end in sight when this will come back. Like you couldn't, at the time you couldn't, you almost couldn't see that yeah. it was ever going to go back to normal. You know? Yeah. There, there was, was definite like questions like that. F- again, different, like in different parts of the world. So the experience that you two had would have been very different to, to the experience we had over here. But even as someone who runs a, a, a business and has a gym, like I remember, you know, you didn't know if like that thought of, oh, fuck, man, like the landlord still wants me to pay commercial rent, but I don't know, like, will I ever get to open again? Do I throw in the towel and close my business and yeah. get a job at a supermarket? Like, is that it for my jujitsu yeah. gym days? Yeah. Like, was hard, right? And especially for as well, like guys, people like yourself who are on the competitive scene and, you know, you need to train so you can compete, but then there's gyms aren't open to train, competitions aren't happening and, you know, yeah, and there was no end in sight, right? In Especially yeah. in the – you couldn't – there was no vaccines then. Like that's a whole other debate whether anti-vax yeah. or not. But there wasn't even an option in the beginning. You were like, Fucking, what the fuck do I do, bro? I know. Yeah. So, and were you guys – were you guys – or when COVID happened, were you guys already together at that stage or no? Like were you guys a support network for each other or you were just training partners or we, in yeah, between? We, yeah, we were just like best, best friends, you yeah. know, and we just – um, but we, yeah, we, we didn't live together yet. We were just like there for each other the whole time, pretty much. Did, so. I mean, excuse my ignorance, but did New York have like official lockdowns where you couldn't go out or, or was it just certain businesses closed? Like how strict was it with the lockdown laws in New York? They weren't, they weren't super strict, but there was a period of time where you weren't like meant to leave a certain, but they weren't enforced that much, you know, but everything was like, everything was just really dead. Right. Yeah, Cause there was, I, I mean, I don't know how the news reported it over there, but there was a lot of deaths right in New York. Wasn't it the yeah. main state for once at one stage, the yeah. New York state was like where there were crazy amounts of cases and deaths and stuff. And were, were the gyms open or no? No, all the gyms were closed. You yeah. had a really intense experience last right? Cause you were living in one of the busiest areas of Manhattan and well, I was, yeah, I was working at the um, Whole Foods in Midtown Manhattan and it was like chaotic. Like I remember the day I left my job, I just like left in the middle of work and it was Levi's birthday. And it was also the day that they announced, um, what was it that I went into like. The state of emergency. Oh, yeah. wow. oh, did they? They declared a state of emergency. Yeah. yeah. So you right. were working at a Whole Foods. Whoa, holy shit. That it would have been the worst place to be. The worst place. <laughs> it was just like, they were like, oh, we'll pay you $2 extra. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had no masks, no yeah. gloves. They were like, no, you can't wear a mask because like, how are people going to talk to you? Like in the beginning. Oh, they actually, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. And they were like, um, you know, just all these, like all this confusion. Um, People were in there like, they sounded like death because it's like this area, it's like a bunch of like older, rich, you know, Mm. um, people. So a lot of people, you know, were definitely sick. I was like, okay, I'm going to like contract something in this bitch. Like, (laughs) 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 so yeah, Yeah. it was so crazy. People were like buying like hundreds and hundreds of like things. So, um, it was one night that night that it was like the state of emergency, um, this lady was like freaking out at me. So I just like, I went downstairs, I clocked out and I left and I was like, Levi, where are you at? I'm going to come see you right now. Like <laughs> yeah. the world's like falling apart. So did you ever go back to work? After I that? never went back to work. No, I, it was just, it was, it was so messy. It, it was like, you know, supermarket, like, you know, yeah, yeah, very like crazy type of job. So but no, it was, it was, it was intense. And then they're just like, oh, we'll pay you $2 extra, which like, basically nothing yeah 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 for all this stuff and like yeah, and they're like no, no 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 not per hour per shift <laughs> right <laughs> give yeah. you an extra two dollars <laughs> fucking jeff bezos yeah i can't yeah. even buy a fucking cliff bar with that shit come yeah, on bro really. yeah, yeah. so during this time we're talking 2019 2020 like the start of the the pandemic if you will in terms of your training you were purple belt at the time still uh yeah i was a purple belt at the time still so you got yeah. your brown belt in 2021 I got it, yeah, in 2020, August of 2021. Right. Yeah. Did, did we, so you, were you guys training together and, and drilling? Because I know um, that 
I mean, I mentioned this in the gym, but just for our listeners, uh, Adam has mentioned a few times how much Levi's training is very centered around like drilling and the emphasis on uh, drilling and visualization, which particularly the visualization piece is pretty unique. Like not many people are willing to do that. It, during this time, were you guys able to get together and advance your game, Alanis, uh, you know, utilizing drilling together or was it just no training? Yeah, for me, um, I wasn't actually allowed to like go to the gym because it was so like limited underground, right. low key. So yeah. I kind of had to just go like to my friend's house. If I she had some mats, I wanted to go train over there or kind of sort of figure it out like that. Um, I think Levi got to go to the gym just because like, so there was like a needed like there was like a closed group of people that were invited In the sort yeah. of yeah, yeah right. but for the first three months of the pandemic from march till june i i didn't train at all yeah it was the first time i hadn't trained which like all. yeah i mean it's crazy. probably in in years would be the longest you've gone without training crazy. and yeah i think people I mean, obviously anyone listening to this podcast trains jiu-jitsu so everyone can relate but for people yeah. who don't train jiu-jitsu like they don't get it like that if you say something yeah. like oh i took two weeks off like you know like even that for us is weird you know like yeah. it's weird to yep. not train every week or almost every day it's like if it's what you do for your career whether you're a competitor or not but if you are in jiu jitsu for a career like man you like you train every day like you know what do you what do you mean take a week off like that's weird you know yeah. why would i take a week off at all so taking months off is is crazy to think that you know and it would have been the the biggest break you would have had since you were probably a white belt right and I guess even yeah. excluding injuries, yeah, for me as well. Co like I can't think of any other time I took time off that wasn't a surgery or something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it was wild. I remember the first day I came, the first like week I came back, I was like, I just can't pull my knees to my chest. The second. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird. I, I had like no core strength. You know, when we came back from, from lockdown though, the thing that, that I was like, oh, I forgot how much this sucked. I was like, washing geese, fuck. Yeah. You know, it was nice. A few months of not washing geese was, was sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so at some point I did want to ask you, Levi, where does, so you're known as Xanadu or the nickname Xanadu God. Like you have the Xanadu world, which we're going to talk about and Xanadu Gi brand. So where does Xanadu come from? What's the origin of that, of that name? Um, it was sort of just a uh, name my mum kind of gave me as like a nickname kind of thing. Um, she was like, I kind of wish I called you Xanadu. And I was like, yo, Xanadu is fire. That name is fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fire. And um, apparently it means um, she would always say or told me it, it meant like par it was some paradise place in China you know, where um, Genghis Khan's army would go and chill in between, like... Murdering people. Murdering people. Yeah, which, yeah right. <laughs> just <take> the, <laughs> just, so just separate them a tiny bit from... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the, on, it was the place, it not was the, the Genghis Khan. It was the place, not yeah, the people. Not the murdering, yeah, yeah. just the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the place. <laughs> Apparently it was lit. So, um, yeah, Xanadu just meant, means like paradise but it's just you know I, it's just it sounds really I, I love how it um how it sounds and stuff like that so um when I first got the money from spider you know the first thing I was thinking was you know trying to be smart with it and just trying to think long term like how can I you know put this somewhere and I was always you know very passionate with um drawing and stuff like I would always be drawing little um pictures and stuff like just another way to you know, sort of express myself or just something I do um, when I was bored. It was just, you know, help me before competitions if I was anxious. And um, so I had a bunch of like a notebooks of drawings and stuff like that. And then I had these little sons I would always used to draw. So when um, I got the money, I was like, oh, I can put these, you know, drawings and pieces and try to make like a gi or something, you know. And then um, that's 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 when it started. Yeah, that's when Zan the Xanadu brand started and then um, just, you know, just putting more energy in towards it then, you know, so, sort of Xanadu God just kind of came. I don't know. I was like, 
on Snapchat. <clears throat> Explain to me though, how did we end up with a goddamn peach coloured gi? How? <laughs> <laughs> wow. how? It's actually, fashion. I, I actually didn't know how as well. Cause it wasn't meant to was be. Was it Alana? Are you point, is it pointing at Alana? Is no, no, no. <laughs> no, it wasn't meant to be. That's the thing. It wasn't meant to be peach. Oh really? Yeah. It was meant to be off white. Oh uh, yeah, and yeah, the, that off And the manufacturer color. fucked it up. So I was oh, like, no way. way. I was like, no okay, way. I guess I got fucking peach now. Go, and, and, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> like, that is it's awesome. It only cost me like fucking all this money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Maybe it was one of those for- fortunate accidents because like I see on Instagram when people will tag you in it, like people, you know, yeah, a bunch people. of people love the peach yeah, tea, man. Fucked, the, fucked did the peach heavy, but yeah, I, I, had, I, had, I had, it was meant to be one white, one black and then one off white because I really like the um, color of off white with red. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like just a really sick um, color combination. I think it was it was Coco Chanel's favorite color combination. So I was like, oh, I need yeah. a tribute to Coco Chanel. Yeah, right. yeah it's gonna be <laughs> lit gi. Um, and then it fucking came and then I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that, like be a fly on the wall for when you, man, fucking keys are here. Open the box. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. It's fine. I guess we'll, we'll, we'll sell these somehow. And then, you know, put them on. They're like, oh, this is, no, this is lit. This, I can see this. This, this, this is fire. And, um, Yeah. Yeah, it worked people out. Actually, people are loving yeah, the peach keys, like, bro. People really like them. But I love that that's uh, what happened, you know, that it was, that it just was a complete accident. Yeah, like penicillin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. Same, <laughs> same impact, yeah. definitely. <laughs> same impact. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. No, but they're very unique. You don't see many um, uh, colored keys <laughs> rocking around because some gyms like uh, – a little bit funny about it, particularly the old school gyms, like, you know, yeah. your and your chains, like Gracie Baja and even yeah. Alliance. Um, you, know, you can only wear blue, white, or black. But, I mean, I fuck with the, the different color geese. I, I suppose. Not in my gym, you don't, not, not, in your, not in your gym, though. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're moving gyms very soon. I'm, I'm seeking, I'm seeking uh, another coach. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think it's a different, just a different way to express yourself, I suppose. Now, in terms of the gi design, you... You, do you design it all yourself, like from the ground up? Do you have have any inputs, or uh, is it is it all all yourself? It's um yeah, it's 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 all myself. I just sort of, it's really easy, you know. I just um I wanted them to be like super minimalist, so yeah, I would basic. I basically just got my vectors. I'm sorry, my drawings I did in my notebook vectorized, and then yep. sort of just you know got a, a blueprint for the gear and just, you just sort of drag it on. You're like, I want to be this color, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted them to be like- <laughs> Off white, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Off white. <laughs> or, pe- or, or peach, or, whatever you, you prefer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you choose it. It's a lucky dip. Yeah, so I guess they didn't really design. <laughs> I almost designed all of them. But yeah. So when when did you first input. launch the the gear brand? This is fairly new, right? Last couple of years? Yeah, it was, um. Yeah, during the the pandemic, I did the first drop, um, and then last year I did, or this year I did the the second the second drop, which they were both small drops, but the first one, you know, made a bunch of mistakes. It was a disaster. Right. Like, is it in the right. manufacturing process, or just like, you yeah. know, in the dealing with the people purchasing them? Both, both, yeah, both, yeah. So I, I learned a lot. At most, yeah, every. Figured it all out in the end. Everyone was um, okay in the end. But yeah, d- there was just, you know, made a bunch of mistakes the first time. And then the second time, um, you know, tiny, uh, less mistakes, but tiny bit, tiny bit better. So, so what know. you're telling me is the third drop will be flawless. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are we expecting Imagine. a third or are you releasing another? Are they available now or are they release uh, periodically? The think? next one is actually going to be a, um, uh, show your all collab, hopefully. Oh, is it? Oh, wow. Yeah. Bro, that'd be sick. Yeah. So um, I'm talking with the uh, bear, the guy that um is in charge of show your all, and um, yeah, we're getting getting a little a little collab key going. Hopefully, yeah, that'd it's just be gonna cool. be like a few. But oh, nice. Yeah. And we can we expect that you know toward this year, or maybe that's like a next year project. I think end of this year, hopefully. Okay. Cool. 
people we can't can't for Christmas, bro. Yeah. People people order it. People like order a peach key and then they open it and it's off white and they go, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this, isn't what, this isn't what I ordered. Well, I'd, I'd love to wear one, but Adam wouldn't let me train. So maybe. No, you get white. Well, you get white, blue and black with me, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like, good, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until oh, the, when they change the rules and say you can compete in a peach key. Peach key. Oh, it depends on the comp, yeah. I suppose. But yeah. Uh. yeah, that's true, doesn't it? That, that is true. Yeah. Um, so then, off the back of like the Xanadu brand, tell us a bit about Xanadu World. So this is a like a joint project, right? That you guys are doing together. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so explain to us a little bit more about because this is really new, right? Mm. This is not yep. long. I mean, we're talking within the last month or so that you publicly kind of put it out there, correct? Yeah. Or maybe a bit. But anyway, either way, it's relatively new. Tell us a bit more about what Senadu World is. Um, <laughs> Off yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you go. Talk a bit. Um, it, it's been something that we've been kind of like talking about since last year. Um, Levi's like, I want to start doing some sort of like virtual thing for people to follow. I think since like COVID too, when all that went down, you kind of, a lot of people resorted to like, you know, starting their own podcast or like <laughs> hey shut hey. up <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's, it's so noises. good right like yeah. you know you, you no longer need to like do things like in person yeah. you can just like ha- you have this whole like outlet to like communicate with people wherever they're at yeah because people's perception has changed right it's not like the platform changed like the internet existed yeah. pre-covid but people are way more receptive yes. to consuming content like particularly instructional content or, uh, you know, online, they've realized, well, fuck, hang on. It doesn't always need to be in person. Right. Yeah. So we basically, we kept putting it in the back burner, like, yeah, we'll start it one day. We'll start it one day. And then eventually the universe, I I always say like the universe made me do this, led me to do this. So like eventually it was kind of just like, okay, now we have to start this. Like we were just like, down so bad that we were like, if we don't start this, like, we don't know how we're going to, you know, make it out here. Like back when we were in New York, cause things were getting like real tight for us. And, um, you know, we started it and we were like, okay, we're good. We're going to stay in New York. Everything's going great. And it's basically just like a platform where we as well, like express ourselves like through our jujitsu, but also not just like, you know, there's like other people have their own like jujitsu platforms where they just teach jujitsu. We also want to share like stuff like lifestyle things. Like we put blo- vlogs, like me dyeing Levi's hair or like, you know, eating different things from the Australian supermarket that I've never tried before, you know, just chasing like, bin chickens. You <laughs> know. Chasing, yeah. So just like, you know, a bit of everything. And it's kind of like, we're, I guess we're trying to build sort of like a you know, family thing online where like people feel connected to us as humans and not just like, oh, like my favorite jiu-jitsu fighter, like we can relate to people in other ways and, you know, connect with them like that and not just through like, oh, you you like me because you like my jiu-jitsu, like you can see a bit of my personality and like, you know, I feel like we, we like to be a bit more exclusive in that sense where like we don't want to put everything on Instagram because I feel like there's definitely a lot of people who just like to consume your content to be a bit more like just like critical and like, you know, yeah, hateful and stuff like that. And this is kind of just like a place where we're like completely open and we know we're sharing it with people that are there because they want to support us. And they're like, um, you know, maybe they're trying to find ways to like identify themselves too, like as jujitsu athletes, because I feel like a lot of times on Instagram, like all you see from like your favorite fighters is like, oh, they work the hardest. Oh, they do this. Oh, they do that. But you never really see personality. Yeah, yeah that's you know? that's a really interesting take on it because like <clears throat> and it kind of ties in with what you said at the, the start about that willingness to be vulnerable and whatever. Yeah. Because Instagram or typically social media as a whole, I'm not a massive fan of it. I don't think it's great for mental health and yeah. all that sort of stuff. But unfortunately, it's – at least in, you know, the current 2022 or whatever, you you know, these years that we're living in, it's kind of mandatory to run a business, you know, you you ought to run a brand, you kind of need Instagram. But yeah, if you're talking about jujitsu guys, um, it's only the, 
it's only like the highlight reels and then training yeah. really hard or doing some flashy technique that, that, they, that they hit yeah. once on a white belt, you know, or whatever. Yeah. But they don't see what was one of the questions I wanted to ha- have you guys talk a little bit about was the, the, how difficult it is to pursue jiu-jitsu professionally. You know, a lot of people don't – I mean, I did it for a period of time in Brazil, but a lot's changed since then. And a lot of people just see the, you know, like the success, the person getting their hand raised and the person hitting these slick techniques. And, yeah, they might realise that it takes a lot of training, Mm -hmm. but they don't realise all the other hard stuff that goes with it, you know, the – Fucking eating two minute noodles for dinner because you had to spend your money for some overpriced registration fee at a yep. comp, and you know that even when you win, there's no prize money, or well, you know, sometimes there is, but usually not, right? 99% mm-hmm. of competitions don't give you shit, yep. or they do give you prize money, but it didn't cover the flights, you had to pay to go there, and all this stuff that, that goes with the struggles. But it sounds like this sort of platform, you'll be people will it'll be way more intimate, right? Yeah. By the sounds of it. You know, there'll be more – it'll be more real and people are going to get to see some of the actual real shit. You know that yeah. meme of of the – that success meme where it's like an iceberg and yeah. it's the tip above the yes. water and it's like no one yeah. sees this shit. It seems like this platform might have a camera underneath the water, mm-hmm. right, so people can kind of see yeah, for the sure. good, the bad, and the ugly, right, that yeah. goes with it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's – yeah, it's really – it's, you know, it's, it's hard because you put um, – you know, you put all your eggs in one basket, you know, if, if you want to be the best or if you want to make it, you know, to the top um, in a competitive, in a competitive way, you have to really, you know, you have to be doing jujitsu all day. And then there's also going to be the other sacrifices because, you know, you're doing jujitsu all day, so you're not really working, you know, so you have to find ways to get by and work and in the money you make, you have to put it back and invest it back into your training and jiu-jitsu, you know, and um, it can, it works out when you, when, when that pays off, you know, like eventually if you keep working really hard and then you, you win the tournament or whatever, then you can make your money back. But a lot of people as well, most people, they put all that work in too. And then, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out, you know, and yeah, not to, everyone can can make it to the top, right? Even if you have yeah. two people putting in the same amount of work and time and whatever, there can only be one winner. Literally. You know, so. And jiu-jitsu's, you know, it's coming out of that stage sort of now, but it's still, you know, in that process where like, you know, if you get, you can get third at the world championship and then you're still struggling to make a living, you know, oh, it's still time. like if, unless you have your own gym or something like that, you know, so it's a lot of, it's so much pressure. It's so, um, you know, um, it's um, emotionally fucked up as well because, you know, you sort of have to, that thing about being vulnerable and stuff is, is also difficult because you also have to, um, a lot of people feel like they have to portray and image of like, um, being the best or like they have to build their value up sort of thing to be able to make any money if that makes sense. So, yeah. um, Well, there is a bit of an aspect of, of it. Unfortunately, we've spoken about it on previous episodes, how uh, kind of, I've got a a bit of like beef and hatred with, with flow grappling just because of the, not the monopoly that they have on the, on jujitsu media that flow grappling itself can make or break a career. You know, so for let's say let's say for example, for whatever reason, they don't cover at all the fight of you winning Euros and, and beating Lepre, for example, right? Yeah. Like that could completely tank your ability to book seminars and whatever, but then they could cover some random person doing whatever, whatever. And a, a good example would be, and th- I probably gave this example at the time that there would be a bunch of people who would book seminars with blue belts from Daisy Fresh, you know, because yeah. they were like overnight popular. sort of popular. popular online stars, right? Because this yeah. one media Definitely. outlet has a monopoly. And so it's it's a bit of a toxic balance, right? Because, yeah, yeah social media is not good for mental health and all this, but at the same time it's like, fuck, man, I kind of need followers and shit so people will want to book seminars with me or because yeah. at the – 
to some degree, you don't have to be in jujitsu anymore the best. Like you don't even necessarily need to make the podium at Worlds, but if you're yep. just some likable, almost in- influencer, man, you'll book seminars out the wazoo. Yeah. You know, it's fuck. I don't know Point. what yep. to do. I don't know what the correct solution is. It's tough, right? It's And I, especially when your livelihood depends on it. Yeah, so, it's, it can be tough. Yeah, for sure. Especially, you know, because most people, they don't un- – they don't even understand that like y- your career is always going to have ups and downs, you know? So they'll like count you out as well. And they'll start to try to like end your yep. career like early, you know? Yeah. I, it's I, like I the remember. second you lose one match, all of a sudden they're like, Oh, like they think you're, you're done, Oh, so they're yeah. done. Man, yeah. you got the attention span of a goldfish, bro. Oh. Fuck. I lost. I mean, you win <laughs> I and lose matches all there through your a, career. There was an article written um, by somebody. He's, they, I think he's he's not with Flow Grappling anymore, but um, there was this article written in Flow. It was like, it was after I had lost um, like Worlds. I got DQ'd at Worlds, and it was also after my friend Italo beat Jamil. Uh, my friend Italo beat Jamil Hill. You know, um, he was what current world champion, and then Italo beat him at this Open or something like that. And um, the whole article was called like, um, like don't bet on. It was something like don't bet on these jiu-jitsu people too early or something like that. Like oh don't think God. they're good just because they beat like one person. And the whole article was just basically discrediting um, Italo's win, you know, and then in the, and then under that it was like people like like Levi who had big wins um, against Lepri and Canuto um, but couldn't win. You see, like they couldn't, we couldn't win World Pro or we got DQ. It's kind of a bit contradictory, right? The article in itself. It's sort of like saving Levi's face, but then also discrediting Italo at the same time. It's like, well, fuck. Pick an an agenda, bro. Yeah. 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 Wow. So it was, yeah, it was, um, yeah, that was like the first time I sort of, I saw that was my experience, like seeing that side of things, which is normal. It's always, it's always going to be a thing for, you know, for people that don't understand that, um, you know, progression is never like, it's never really like this, you know, it's always, it goes in waves, you know, so like you go up and then you go down a tiny bit and then, you know, you go up and then like go down, like you just yeah. slowly progress like that, you know, it's yeah. never like. like yeah, as that, long as you, you know? have a net gain, right. You know, like there'll always be ups and downs, but as long as like there's, you know, in the long run, there's an upward trajectory, Yeah, you know, you're sweet, but and not I, many people are from the beginning of the, their career to the end of it <laughs> on top the whole time, right. you know, yeah. not many people. I mean, yeah, of course it does happen. You know, there's whatever people like, you know, Tiger Woods in golf or like yeah. Michael Schumacher in formula one. And obviously at the moment in jujitsu, like Gordon Ryan, but so there's always going to be exceptions to the rule, but there's not many people like you can pick, one or two in each sport around the world where it's like, okay, they were the best from start to finish. Yeah. Not like pretty much it's always up and down. You're going to have highs and lows and wins and losses. Yeah. And I feel like if people don't realize that it's, it's, it's like this, you know, as like progression, then, then they'll, they'll quit as well. You know, they won't have. Yeah, for sure. That first hurdle might be enough for them to be like, Oh, this bullshit. I'm out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I I suppose that comes back to what you've been saying or the theme of, of of even what uh, Xanadu world's about, about being vulnerable, being like, you know, being in front of all these people and being okay with being yourself. So what is it like being in the the limelight? Because, you know, you're a a very well-known grappler in such a small community, but you've been able to grow such a large influence, um, particularly because of the meteoric rise in, in 2019, you have gotten a lot of media coverage on Flow and other other um, platforms. What's it like being in the limelight or having that criticism come your way? Um, you know, it's it's just, it's bittersweet because it's, you know, it's obviously um, really amazing and you feel really grateful for um, anybody or like, you know, when people have appreciation and, you know, you feel like your work pays off as well. Mm. Um, which is just honestly what I focus on most of the time, you know, like even if there's just one person that's like stoked for me, then that's like all that matters really. I'm just hyped on that. So, um, I don't really think too much about the, the, anybody that's like hating or something like that, to be honest. Um, but 
yeah, it's just, it's just always going to be there like that. And then, you know, you just feel like a tiny bit more pressure and then going into like, you know, big tournaments. I remember when I went to spider, I had like so many doubts that day going in because, you know, I was like thinking, you know, my earlier wins, they could have just been flukes, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Just so, so starting to believe, um, what other people were saying. And, um, that sort of, you can take that and then you can sort of let it, you know, beat you sort of thing, or you can, um, find some meaning sort of in winning because for me that day was like really special to me because I was thinking I had so many doubts, but I was thinking to myself, like, if I can, if I can win today, then I'll really know that it doesn't matter how many doubts you have. They actually don't mean anything. Like you can still, you can be going out into a match, into a competition and be like sure in your head, you're just going to get submitted or something like that, but you can still win regardless, you know? Yeah. And then that was, um, a really empowering day because I was like, you know, it doesn't matter how many doubts you have. You can, you'll still, like, they, they don't mean anything. They're just like, doubts, you know? Well, Speak, speaking yeah. of the, the spider invitational. So part, uh, along with the prize money, you got this trophy that was like a, <laughs> a, a helmet, like a helmet from the movie 300. Yeah, like a Spartan helmet. Spartan yeah. helmet. Where is this helmet? It's just, um, it's at home. It's, it's with my, it's with my mom. So down yeah, in it, Melbourne, it's right? It's in Melbourne. It's in Melbourne. Um, yeah. Does it fit? It does fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just getting like for a few months after I was just getting so fat, just spending like so much of my money on Uber Eats, just like <laughs> <laughs> big belly, just like wearing the helmet. You got the helmet, you're like, oh, it's, nice. it's stuck. It won't come on. <laughs> Put down the sandwich, Lever. <laughs> literally. literally. Like, yeah. uh, so uh, I want to ask, I mean, I, I feel like I have a good idea what the, the goal still is, but uh, what's we, with you, Alanis and your jujitsu, what's, is this something as well that you are, you know, all your eggs in the one basket? Like, yeah, you've got, you know, you're working together with Xanadu world and everything. Uh, but is, uh, is the current goal for you, you know, Brown belt worlds next year is, you know, is the goal to, to really make your career through jujitsu as well? What's your, your goals at the moment? Yeah. Um, so, well, I started jujitsu back in, um, Florida. I, I started at, um, Gracie Baja and I basically, before jujitsu, I did not like any sports. I used to like get my nails done, makeup done. I don't want to get sweaty, you know, <laughs> all that stuff. And I was, I was 15 and my mom's like, you got, you got to do something. Like you can't just like watch Netflix till 5 a.m. And I'm like, okay. And then she's like, well, why don't you try some self-defense things? So I go in, I start jujitsu. Um, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. It's all good. Um, so yeah, I start training and I didn't really like it at first. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like after the warm up, I was like already dead. And then after three months, I actually went into my first competition. I was like, what? Really? Yeah, I was like, I guess wow. I'll try it. And like, you know, I was 15. So I was kind of like, I was down for the competition. Like I wanted to, I was always competitive. That was like one thing about me. Like I was always competitive, not in a sports um, way, but like in every other aspect. Um, and then I really liked it. So then a year in jujitsu, actually, I was um, this back then you would get a green belt after your white belt. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, and then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to get my blue belt and I'm just going to quit. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get my blue belt and quit. And then I took two weeks off. I went into my last quote unquote last training session. And that day I just like had this feeling like I did so good that day in training. And like, I got, cause I got like the blue belt blues. I was like frustrated. I was like, I don't want to do this shit no more. Like I don't even want to compete. And I got this sensation of like, now nah, you're in this, like you're not going to leave. And a year after that, I decided, I told my mom, I was, I was um, 16 and I was like, I was really good at school and I was meant to like go to college and stuff. And I told my mom, I was like, I don't want to do school. Like I just, I want to do jiu-jitsu for a living. And I had all these people 
at my gym back there, back then, like black belts and stuff tell me like, oh no, you can't do jujitsu for a living unless your parents are rich. You can't do jujitsu for a living unless you're going to be sleeping on the mats and living like, you know, completely like poor and stuff. And I looked at him and I was like, okay. And then I thought to myself, I was like, because there's an aspect of truth in that, unfortunately, right. yeah, isn't yeah, yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not necessarily them, you know, it depends on the, how they said it, yeah, like yeah, whether yeah. they were discouraging you or whether they were being like, I just want you to be informed. Right. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. So I, I remember just taking it like as a challenge and yeah. I was like, bet. I was like, yeah. so let's go. <laughs> yeah. So then I basically decided I was just going to do it for a living. And that's, I would basically just be at the gym uh, like I could really relate to Levi cause he would tell me like, he'd be like trying to get training partners to come in before to drill. And like, mm -hmm. that's what I basically did. I would just have a bunch of training partners come in and then drill before training after training. And then basically eventually in 2018, I went to Gi world. So I did world as a juvenile and then I, I got like third and I was like super devastated. Like I was, cause it, I lost my first match. It was like juvenile. So you'd like still podium. Yeah. And I was like, I want to win. Like I want to get better. So, um, I looked into unity because, um, the girl, a lot of the girls there were like doing really good. And I feel like I really wanted that like fe feminine, like energy and like fem like women training partners that were like, you know, encourage me. And I didn't really have that back in Florida where I was at. So, I basically, when I was 17, I went up to Unity for a month after Worlds after I lost. And then um, I was there for a month and I was like, oh my gosh, it was like back at the old gym. I was like, this is, this is lit. Like, I, I want to be here. I want to like, I want to suffer. I want to train hard. I want to like, I, did you guys see that video on Flow of like, the I'm getting. The showering. Yeah. Yeah, that's the yeah. fucking yeah. gross. Yeah. But yes, I that, saw it. Yeah. yeah. When I showering saw that. between rounds. It's yeah. Insane. Yeah. I was like, oh, I want to go there. Yeah. Like, I was like, <laughs> Get me a healthy dose of staff. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Right. You know? What's the go with that? Like the, the showering between rounds. Um, I did that a couple of times. Yeah, was it just because it was <laughs> so hot in that in there? Was yeah. it just a sauna? Yeah. It would, time, it would yeah. get so hot that you would, you'd be overheating. You wow. know, and you, there was no, um, Ventilation. all the doors and stuff were closed. You know, you couldn't, you couldn't leave the, the room. So there was no air flow wow, whatsoever. Yeah. So it was sort of like the only way you could. You just like, oh my God. <laughs> and in the summertime, the, it would just get really hot. There was no AC in the room either. So New York summer is like yeah. gross. It's oh, really what a dark. punish. Yeah. But you were all for it. You were like, I'm in. Yeah, I was all in. And then. <laughs> So basically wow, this I, is really um, tough. Like <laughs> <she's> like, <laughs> it's like crazy tough. She's, yeah. but it was like with all these other women who were doing the same thing. So I yeah. really felt like, you know, really good connected and, you know, it was really hard training and everything. So, um, yeah, I basically had decided that I, I, my mom's only thing was like, you can go to New York, but you have to like keep going to school. So I actually kept going to school until like mid pandemic where I was like, okay, I'm like, I could just feel it like it was not for me like it's not you know um just like something you like feel you know and then like mm -hmm. I basically yeah put all my eggs in the basket when I went to New York I went through a lot of um crazy because I well I left my house I was 18 and you know I did really good like I won a lot of the um nogi titles and I my goal was always I always want to win like gi worlds like you know, I didn't care too much about winning in the color belts. I was always like, of course I want to win. But for me, it was always like, this is a foundation for like yeah, 100%. Yeah. black belt for me. And like, you know, I was always devastated whenever I didn't win worlds. Like I was always crying and stuff, but I was always just like training harder and harder and like, just like wanting to go back and, you know, never discouraged by like a loss or anything like that. And, um, yeah, after I, um, I was like best friends with Levi for the longest. And, you know, once we got together, he really like elevated my game. And like, I was like, okay, so I went to worlds this year as a brown belt. And this is, this was like the year where like, I would say it was like the best I ever did. Cause I, you know, I got to the finals and, you know, it was a really amazing feeling to, I, I almost won the final. It was yeah, really fucking close. crazy. Yeah. But like, um, I was, I was fine about it, you know, cried it. And then I was like, it's fine. Like, you know, I really can feel like I was, I'm doing the right thing. And like, you know, maybe it's, it's like a rough 
couple of years since the pandemic, um, a few things that I went through with like, you know, I was, like I said, I was 17 when I first went to New York. I was really like naive in a way. And like, I'm, I'm 22, so I'm still like dumb, but, <laughs> 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 but like, you know, I was just like too trusting of people. And like a lot of people didn't really have the best intentions, a lot of like jealousy there from like the people that were like, I was living with specifically. Mm. And, um, it wasn't until I finally got out and I say I got out, but really like I, I always say like Levi's my hero. Like he saved me because like he, he really did. And like he inspired me and like I just like I was like basically I smoked weed like every single day for like a couple of years back then because, you know, I was just like in this vortex of abuse and, you know, mental instability and I was still like winning a lot of shit through that which is that's so insane. weird yeah that's crazy but I was finally able to you know come out of that and you know I'm really looking forward to yeah brown belt worlds I definitely look forward to that next year and I look forward to black belt years I I just want to my goal is definitely to win you know worlds as a black belt i really want to be into the adcc in 2024 for nogi because that's more of like i've always done better in nogi which has always made me want to win in the gi it's like you always want the opposite of like what you <laughs> what, you, know? what you can't have sort of thing yeah, yeah so i'm like i'm gonna prove myself wrong i'm gonna just like win shit in the gi because i just didn't really have the resource and help that i needed to like develop like my open guard for example um but more than just that, than just like, you know, winning jujitsu tournaments, I really want to help elevate um, women's jujitsu and help empower them and, you know, just like show that you can, we can all like be in this together. Like it doesn't have to be like we're all fighting for the spotlight. Like there's enough room for everybody to shine. And, you know, um, especially like I wouldn't say I'm like a role model for young girls because I'm a bit like, I don't know. Some parents might be like, oh, she's a bit like vulgar. I'm like, yes, I am. I'm like, yes, I am. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm crazy. I'm like that. I'm just going to say what I want, do what I want. But as far as like, you know, that that's what I want to encourage, like women to feel free to express themselves without feeling like, oh, I can't post something like this or say something like this because like a, a girl can't do that. Or like they're, they're afraid of being like, you know, sexualized in some type of way. Like I'm just like, we're free. Like, yeah. And I mean, girls, okay. girls definitely do need more, like more support than they get in the sport. Yeah. We, we spoke about it on an episode a while back. There was this competition here locally that we just essentially dumped shit on because it gave away tickets. Like the winners got free flights to no gi worlds. Yeah. Unless you're a woman, there were no prizes for the women. Yeah. And then there was so much backlash. They did end up like after a lot of not just us, but heaps of people like, you oh. know, uh, you might not know who Jess Fraser is. Levi would know. He's one of yeah. like the, you know, OG female black belts in Australia. Oh. So like Jess Fraser, Hope Douglas, like heaps of people just were dumping that. shit on this wow. this guy and for putting on a tournament that offered – like, like he was giving free flights to the male juveniles really? to no gi worlds over the female black belts, wow. you know. But then he copped enough flack that he ended up putting uh, a right. ticket for the for the women. But it, you know, shouldn't have had to come to that, Crazy, you know. Yeah. And I always like all this shit. Like I always say to Kieran and and other people. You know, people like Gabby Garcia. People dump shit on her, and it's like, man, like you don't like. A, it's not her fault she's massive. You know, she's like, I used to train with Gabby and she's as tall as me, man. Like, you know, and she's from an earlier time in jiu-jitsu. Like people yeah. dump on her for saying her jiu-jitsu isn't that technical or whatever. Like, man, she did a lot for women's jiu-jitsu and she gets so much flack. Like people, know. you know, imagine – she gets successful and then people say she's a dude, say she's yeah. got a dick, say this, that. And it's like, oh, yeah, great. So you're now making it really welcoming for any, you know, right. large woman who wants to try jujitsu. Literally. Like, I love how Gabby, Gabby just, like, does not – like, she just, like – I'm sure, like, you know, it's still – like, as a woman, like, it's probably still hurtful, you know, like, for people to – for you to, like, do so much and for people to just, like – 
continuously like use you like as a punching bag for their own yeah. fucking like insecurities yeah. and stuff. But I just love how she just like be like pole dancing, just like yeah, right. Here, She's out like, there pole dancing. She's yeah. a bad bitch. Yeah. I'm like yes, I love her yeah. so much. And like I, I saw that. even just this last ADCC, you know, uh, someone was saying, you know, oh, it's bullshit that. Uh, she's fighting Nikki, the Australian girl, in that first match. Like, look at the size difference, blah, blah, blah. And, like, it's not Gabby's fault. Talk to Mo. He's yeah, the right. one who just has the two weight divisions for the women. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it's not yeah. Gabby's fault. Like, she yeah. can't be – like, she's pretty ripped, man. Like, yeah. okay, whether she's taken gear or not probably has. Like, it's a, But it's irrelevant. Most Everyone, of do. Most yeah. of the yeah, people are on right. gear, right? But, like, she's lean now, man. She can't get much lighter yeah. than she is. Yeah. She's just she's six strange. foot four. She's huge, yeah. But, really? but yeah, but I think Mo should definitely. I think after I, this year, he's. I think there's like, enough girls to do it. Like, yeah. I mean, uh, the caliber of, you went to the Oceana trials here, man, the skill set and the amount it's of amazing. chicks competing at the Oceana yeah. trials. Amazing. Like, man, yeah. I don't, okay, I don't know the official numbers, but I find it hard to believe that in another two years, there wouldn't be enough to add a third weight division for the girls. Right. Like, surely yeah. there's enough high level girls, man. Like, we had, um, you know, like purple belt chicks making it to the finals of the trials yeah. and stuff. So much, like, so much, so much talent. talent. Mm -hmm. yeah. So but you said that uh, ADCC 2024 is one of your goals. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Um, in terms of your training, are you focusing, is the, the short-term goal for Gi Worlds and then shifting focus to the no Gi scene or are you doing both at the same time with your training? How, how are you splitting your training up to align with your goals? Yeah, I, I for me – during this um, upcoming season, I plan to focus mostly in my gi training and still a bit of no gi in there. As far as like learning, I definitely want to um, not as much like rolling no gi. That's something I want to like leave for after the gi season. Okay. But um, I definitely want to expand on my leg lock and wrestling game. That's like my main goal right now. I feel like I have a really good top game. I have a really good guard game, but I want to definitely improve on my stand up and my leg lock game because you know as I said like Gracie Baja like they don't really show any type of leg locks it's more like old school stuff so I'm really good at the basics and that type of stuff but I I want to be like really well-rounded and especially like like these girls are good you know like yeah. I just want to be just like well-rounded and get really good at the leg attacks and the stand up because I feel like after watching ADCC, especially, I feel like that's where there was a big, um, how can you say discrepancy? It? Like, yeah. Bit, yeah. So it was like a lot, like a lot of the stand up, it wasn't like that much there, but like if one girl had like really good stand up and they were just like kind of coming out Steam on rolling. top. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah I noticed that. I want to do some wrestling. I want to do some leg locks. And Wrestling's so I, hard. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Levi? Like for, for no gi? Cause you had a, you know, a, a, a brief stint. You did some of like the who's number one, no gi. And you know, slump to no gi. I mean, you won pans at purple belt. I think purple and blue belt, I think. Oh, no, you won Just, two years in a row at purple belt, right? Yeah. Uh, pans, no gi. So, I mean, it's not like you've never done no gi and you're not capable in no gi, but I recall in an interview after your last no gi match that you you said something along the lines of, I'm going to take a bit of time off no gi and just focus on the gi for worlds and everything. Yeah. Is that still the goal or do you still, you know, have plans to do more do more no gi in the future. Do you have any ADCC plans or how do you feel about that gi versus no gi argument? I mean, honestly, I, I really like, um, I really enjoyed like doing no gi. So when I got back um, from the uh, pandemic um, to Australia, I, I came back for like six months in um, last, at the beginning of last year and I just did, Nogi for like the first nine months of the year. So all of 2021, I was just doing Nogi. Um, You're doing it down with Lockie, right? In Melbourne. Yeah, I did yeah. a lot of um, training there, like the ADCC training. So working a bit of wrestling as well and stuff like that. And, um, you know, Lachlan was inspiring me a lot because he was, he was showing me, he was like, look, you can just, your game actually works really well for Nogi. If you just learn how to free your knee line and um, use like just, 
you can just spam barren bowlers and stuff like that. And you can actually get out to the back a lot. And um, that was really exciting for me. So, cause we saw a bit of that, right? Like that's the, I mean, it's a, a puzzle piece that doesn't yet seem to be completely solved. I don't know if you would agree, obviously your bowler game is, you know, one of the best in the world. So, uh, but it seems it hasn't quite yet been solved, that puzzle piece of no gi bearing bolos. Yeah. But do you still feel like there's there's something there or do you feel like you've got that missing piece? Because we saw it in some of your no gi uh, yeah. uh, fights, right? And it's not like you instantly fell into the saddle, like which is one of the arguments people write off the no gi bolo for straight away, right? So, oh, you can't put in a deep De La Hiva hook. They're just going to sit to the saddle. and But we didn't see that happen. Yeah. Had – do you think you have that missing piece? Definitely. I, th- I feel like if you're really experienced with the Baron Bolo game, then you have like a natural understanding of the knee line and stuff and how to free your knee line. So um, I definitely felt like, especially training with Lachlan every day, it was really helpful. Because you would have, because if you did make mistakes with your knee line, you would have been punished pretty quick by yeah, Lockie, right? Yeah, I mean, he's one of the best heel hooks in the game. So um, after training with him and just, We'd just be going back and forth like that. I had like a lot of confidence that, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. You know, it's pretty, a lot of, anyone can figure it out how to free their knee and how to defend the hooks if they just trained with somebody um, that's really good at them for a while. But they actually have a, a couple of parallels, right? Like, you know, leg entanglements or heel hooks and, and bolos, they both have that in common, like the kind of, you know, if your knee line's clear, but you have though their knee line, you you know you can attack the heel hook. But there's also some truth to that in attacking bowlers, right? You yeah. Know, if someone clears their knee line, you to some degree lose the bowler without having to do a, you know, re invert and a crab ride and whatever. Yeah. Right. So I guess they kind of marry. So there should be a good partnership there. Yeah. It, it they actually go together like really well. So you can always every time they def, you defend a leg lock, you have an opportunity to get to their back, and um as well I found like all the entries to the Baron Bowlers and stuff, you can modify them slightly to be able to attack legs as well, you know? So just the movement is is that I just feel like I need to do more um more wrestling. But I'm my goals are pretty much um no gi now just because I feel like that's where um the money is, you know, that's where you can make more of a career. That's where you can make more of a name, you know? So I'm going to keep focusing on no gi. Um, Are you still going to do gi worlds next year? Do you still plan to do that? Yeah, that's like, that's like my, my still like my first goal. Is and then after, so it yeah. sounds like you got similar sort of, if yeah, you were to have, draw a little like two, three, four, five year plan, it's like, okay, we got gi worlds. And then, you know, next after that, we got no gi and, you know, maybe that's no gi worlds, but ADCCs in another two years. Yeah. And so it seems like you have similar, uh, goals in, in terms of what you want to work on with your jiu-jitsu. Yeah, we're, we're definitely on the same um, – we, we stay on the same page because, you know, we're with each other. Like we stay like with each other all day and we're always like, you know, we have the same lifestyle. So we sort of set goals that we're going to go um, towards like together and then work, work towards them together. But, um, yeah, we're sort of just um, right now in the stage where we're figuring out you know, the best plan of action just to reach those goals, like where we're going to, um, where we're going to base ourselves to train for them and stuff like that. Because, um, yeah, we're definitely like, neither of us are afraid to put in the work that it takes and stuff like that. We just have to be, um, in the smartest, like the best, the best place to be able to to, ex- to execute the plan. Yeah. yeah Cause I guess you've got a, a, a few options, right? You've, I mean, you spent a lot of time training in the US. So, you know, whether you end up back in the US, you've got people you know in Sydney, uh, your mum's in Melbourne, you know, you've got Lockie in Melbourne, who is definitely Australia's best nogi guy, right? For, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, so like who lives in Australia, obviously Craig is a very famous Australian nogi grappler, Fantastic. you know, um, but yeah, you, you, it'd be hard to argue that Absolute and Lockie is not the best nogi gym in Australia. But yeah, so you've got some options to consider, right? I mean, sure. but I guess Worlds isn't that too isn't too far away. We're already almost October, pretty much by the time this episode will air, which I think is just on Friday, right? Yep. So right. I mean, we're end of September. Like before, you know it, it's going to be the end of the year, and then you're looking at 
five to six months before yep. Worlds. So, mm. I mean, you got some options, but yeah, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. You've, you're both willing to do the work. It's just a matter of what's going to be the best environment to facilitate to, to, to allow us to do the work, you know, yep. cause we'll do it. We just need, we kind of just need the space and the training partners and whatever, whatever else goes with it. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you think, do you, do you have, do you kind of, are you leaning in any particular way yet? Or you're still, you only got, got back to Australia less than a week ago, right? So you're probably still jet lagged <laughs> as it is, but do you kind of, are you still just kind of really, look, we're just going to let things settle first or do you already kind of have a plan of where, what you'd want to do? We're slightly, you know, developing a, like, yeah, it's, it's in the works. We sort of have an idea of, of um, what, like where we're going to be right now. We're just, you know, um, making do with like just training wherever we can. But, um, but, um, yeah, so we didn't even realize we were going to be in Australia, you know, a week ago. So yeah, yeah it was quite a, quite a last minute trip yeah, back, this, wasn't it? Yeah. This last, so everything right now is, is, um, is a bit, is a bit chaotic for yeah. sure. Because yeah, literally, literally we, we, I think if you asked us a week ago where we were going to, if we were going to be in Australia, we would have said no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I was going to say at the same time, it's something we've kind of been talking about since May of the, or actually February of this year. Right so you're sort of flirting with the idea for a little bit. Yeah. We've been like considering like, what if we were in this state or what if we were, cause I feel like sometimes if you, at least for me personally, like if I, whenever I made a decision, um, just based off like the most comfortable thing, it was always, it always came back. The universe was like, nah, nah. So it was always, it was kind of like that. We just kept, no, let's do this. Cause it's more comfortable. Let's do this. Cause we already know this. We already know it's going to be like this. And it's kind of the fear of the unknown at the same time. And the fear of like going through, you know, more, Try and, trial and error type of thing but it's definitely something we've been just like like you said flirting with for the past year where we're like well, what about that area what about this area what about those training partners and just kind of like observing certain people from like a distance and then I think soon we'll be ready to just kind of like okay let's let's go with that let's let's, let's talk let's see but it's definitely been like floating around since early, early this year. Well, I'll, se I'll selfishly say it would be nice if it was Australia because it's closer, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like it's yes. very, far, very <laughs> far and few the times we get to train together, you know. Yeah, I mean, um, and like I know from experience that you, you can make it, you can you can really make it like anywhere, you know, you can train, um, you know, if, if you have the experience, you just sort of need the experience of like what works and what doesn't work. That's you know? right. Yeah, I would agree with that. Like you can't, you know, it's going to be difficult to be like, you know, here's a one-stripe white belt, you know, go train in the middle of nowhere and you're going to make it. Like obviously you need some level of of knowledge and experience, but then once you've got that, you know, yeah. it's kind of like I guess any profession, you know, if you were an engineer, once you would get to a certain level, you don't necessarily always need like – this professor helping you and these peers, you know, you can figure problems out by yourself and you can yeah. create the plan and structure to do things yeah. by yourself. So I, mean, I know selfishly I'll say, hopefully it's Australia. So we get to yeah. train together more often. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, my, my camp for Euros and my camp for Spider, you know, previously to those two competitions, it was like I had six months in Australia, you know, preparing for them. So I always found like I did really well preparing in, in, um, in Australia for the, for the big competitions, you know, you can, and I heard it from a lot of different, um, high level competitors as well that would say in the same thing. Like, um, I was talking to Mikey, mm -hmm. Uzumichi, um, and Bruno Malfasini as well. He was, they were kind of telling me that, um, he was telling me that he just trains with, you know, hobbyists pretty much. Yeah. He said and, that um, in an interview recently, didn't he? Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, he just has, you still put in the work, you know, you do a lot of drilling and you get like your rolling in or maybe you get your conditioning outside as well. But, you know, you really can, um, 
You, you really? don't, yeah, you don't have, to, it's not like a, it's not like set in stone, man, you need to have 20 other world champion black belts to roll with on the regular to make it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Okay. That can help, but there's plenty of people who have proved that that's not the recipe. And I remember after Lockie's big explosion at ADCC, he kind of quite quickly said something like that kind of where he was said something along the lines of, see, you don't have to leave Australia to get, be good at jujitsu and, yeah, you know, yeah. be successful. And for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah that's sick. Like leaning, like being, you know, spending more time out here and then just kind of like traveling to the States for like the big comps or, you know, even like Europe and those places, like all the big comps and then kind of like returning to, you know, this really like, Paradise. You know what? That's a, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) That's also a, a, a good point to make as well. Right. Because there's definitely a certain level of, you know, let's say for argument's sake, you know, Mm -hmm. the training's not as good here, but the lifestyle and the happiness is far better than over here where the training might be better, but you're miserable and you don't like it. Like where's, where's the, you know, where's the golden ratio. And you might Mm -hmm. find that just, you as a human being is going to be happier in one place and that's yeah. going to make your jujitsu better because yeah. you're, you're mentally in a better place and whatever. And sure. so I guess, you know, there's a lot of things to consider. For sure. Yeah, I've definitely found, and I, I only realized that this year, like I've had better performances and like, just like inside my own like mind, you know, cause it's the only place where you really like feel it when I didn't have all the jujitsu like tools versus when I had all the tools, but I, everything was like a wreck, you know? Mm. And I definitely feel like I kind of miss that. Like sort of like I, like I'm so confident, like I don't have any, I do have self doubt, but I don't care. I'm just going to go for it. Feeling like relentless, ferocious in, in this bitch, like we out um, <laughs> versus like, you know, when you're like going through like, something like chaotic and you're like not feeling that great every day kind of feels like a drag. And, you know, maybe you have like, you're just as better than it's been, than it was when you were like a blue belt. But when you're going to step out there, you're like, I don't really want to be here. And like, I kind of, that's, that's like that feeling. I kind of started feeling like, or I was like, like at worlds, I was really, I was like, I got that feeling again. Like I was feeling like, cause I, I cut weight for the first time too. And I was like, just feeling so good, but it took, I feel like, so much effort to feel that compared to like when I was in a really healthy, like day to day, like super feeling super good, super great. So I, yeah, that's why I've been, I want to, I want to go back to that feeling, you know, where like, it doesn't really matter if your jujitsu is not like, it's like not better than the other person's, you know, it's all like what you're feeling inside and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's Australia. No. <laughs> so uh before we, we we wrap up i've read a, a question here that kirit has written down uh, that I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna ha- we'll finish with this this question so kieran take it away i like this so I, I i mentioned to to levi that i i had a quick uh google search if you if you google search levi jones leary You'll find some interesting things. And um, <laughs> <laughs> this one was interesting. I read, I read the interview you did and it's the, the title of the article was, uh, I think something along the lines of Jiu-Jitsu world champion contemplates face tattoo. Is, <laughs> is, is this okay. true that you are contemplating getting a face tattoo? If so, what would you get and where? Um, yeah, so definitely been contemplating a face tattoo for a while just because I, mean, I don't have any tattoos at all or piercing. So you might be like, why, why a face tattoo first? <laughs> yes. But, um, you know, I have just feel like there's no better time in the history of humankind, maybe, than right now to get a face tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> like if, you look, if you look at everything, you know, maybe there was some ancient civilizations where face tattoos were just it. Yep. But yeah, I feel like right now is just, just the time. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really, really contemplating it a lot. What um, would you and, get? And I would just get like probably, probably just like a little Xanadu sun right here. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Like the ones yeah, that are on yep. the geese. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just a little, something like that. How do you feel about this, Alana? <laughs> <laughs> just like... 
I have so much trust in Levi. Like sometimes I want, I ask myself, I'm like, are you trusting too much? Because like anything, he, any creative thing that he's like, I'm going to do this. I want to do that. Anytime we walk by a tattoo shop, he's like, and I'm like, I'm like, let's go. You want it? Let's do it. Well, like, I just, like, oh, they're closed. They're yeah. closed. Yeah. It's like, like, they're time. right there. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you want to, I was like, I was actually, yeah. I'm like, yeah, just, let's do it. Let's just get it. Let's just. I'm like, I'm so supportive. It, like she's of too supportive his, that I'm like, actually, I'm no, like, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, if you, if you do go that route, I know that a lot of tattoo artists, if it's your first tattoo, they'll flat out refuse to do a face tattoo. Oh, wow. Yeah? A lot of artists will be oh. like, nah, man, that's like a, you need a certain level. You, you need to have proven right. yourself before I'll do a face tattoo. Okay. So, I'll, so I'll you might to, you, get some other tattoos. First. Or yeah. no, just find a dude in a garage with a, <laughs> with a tattoo gun. That's actually got a. Tattoo gun. Yeah, see, there you go. You know, I'm just saying some tattoo artists, I'm sure you'll find some that will just be like, in the chair, bro, you know. I got my first tattoo at a jiu-jitsu gym when I was 15. Oh, Oh, did you really? 15, wow. Uh, Don't tell me it's a GB symbol. Is it a Gracie Bar? Imagine it was at a Gracie Bar. Oh, no. It's this tiny little heart on my ankle. And then I I just called my mom like, mom, like my, we we used to teach the kids class together, like me and my friend's name is Michael. He's like, I brought my kit. And then I call my mom, like, mom, I'm getting a small tattoo right now. She's like, no, don't do it. Um, please. Okay, fine. So <laughs> <laughs> it's all fucked up. It's it's really bad, but like, it's, like, it's so pretty, good. It's pretty, it's pretty it's good, like, actually. But at least that's like tasteful, like a little <laughs> yeah. heart on yeah. your ankle. Yeah. Hard, I, yeah. I, I know a girl who like a circle, but <laughs> I know a girl who did her whole her whole glute and it was supposed <laughs> to be a big rose petal, like a big rose, but it was so shittily done it just looks like a cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> so her whole oh, no. ass is just a cabbage, you know? Yeah, oh. the big, yeah that's, that's fucked up. Yeah, that's, that's risky. That's, that's, risky. Gnarly. that's, that's risky. hilarious. Oh, well, we've been going for, for a couple of hours. This is a longer episode than usual. So, um, guys, thank you so much for coming on. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Let's us. finish with um, with Xanadu World. So how can people find it? I think we'll probably, we'll put a link to it Definitely. right yep. in, the, in the description or whatever. Mm-hmm. So where can people find it? Um, yeah, so you can just find it in either of our um, Instagram bios. It's um, which for those who don't know, your handle is mine. Xanadu God and Alana says is with threes instead of E's and three S's. Yes, yes. Yeah, so if you type, if you, I can tell you, if you just start writing the word the, but <laughs> yep. put put a three instead of an E, yes. it's pretty much the first one that will come up. Yeah, the yeah. The, the Empress. Mm-hmm. So it's in both of your Instagrams. Yeah. Otherwise, the link is is world dot com. I think. Well, it's it's like it's Patreon, so I don't even know what the link is. I think it's if like, you go to Patreon, yeah, if you go to the oh, yeah. Patreon, you type in Xanadu World, you'll find it. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll put a link to <laughs> everything oh. in the description. We'll have a link as, in the, yeah. so as your uh, BJJ uh, fanatics instructional Xanadu back takes. I'll put everything that uh, awesome. that both uh, Levi and Alanis do in the in the show notes, so you can check it out. Uh, yeah. There's also for people who want to find out more about Levi and. They thought this podcast was dog shit. Give us, <laughs> give us some real reporting. Wow, Flo, Flo did quite a cool, you know, little video on Levi uh, called The New, the New Guard. Guard yeah. I believe it's a cool little Flo film on, awesome. on, on cool. Levi. We'll, um, we'll look forward to a future Flo video about Alanis. Yes. Um, you guys said you live such a similar lifestyle. When are we going to hear some Alanis freestyle hip hop, huh? She be freestyling for real. Like she's good. <laughs> she be freestyling. She's actually real good. I some people. Yeah. Hey, all right, all right. Just, hey. I'll just be like randomly like sitting down. She'll start popping off like, <laughs> like, nice. like somebody. Else. So it's coming soon, is what we're what we're hearing. Yeah, yeah I had a dream last night actually that I that I was, I was rapping actually in my dream. Really? Last night. Yeah, oh, really? I was, I was like be. sitting. I was like on top of your shoulders, and I was like, someone like. Oh, I was pissed off because they had the, this ride was closed. This fun slide was closed. Right. I was like <laughs> shitting on that. I was like, fun slides closed. Like, <laughs> I love it. It's just All right. <laughs> That's a film clip in the making. Sick. Good. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, as always, you can find us on Instagram at Beyond Jiu Jitsu underscore podcast. We'll have the links in our in our bio for all of Levi and Alanis' stuff. Uh, follow them on Instagram, The Empress, Xanadu God, Xanadu World. It's all there. Instructionals from BJJ Fanatics for Levi. And wow. yeah, exciting things to come. Guys, stay tuned to hear where they're going to be training their world's camp for next year and then ADCC and beyond. 
Guys, thanks so much. And thank uh, so much. thanks so much for having really us. Really fun. Yeah, we'll catch you on the flip side.